calorimetry is um, one of those things where um, <laughs> ambivalence isn't the right. Uh, I feel like it's a chemistry topic. I feel like it's something that you should have learned in general chemistry or high school chemistry. And, but at the same time, um, it is covered in chapter one, so you should know. <laughs> um, and so anyway, so, so it, this question five, it's um, um, particularly complicated the version of calorie or um, particul potentially particularly complicated version of calorimetric question. So I want you to go over this as a kind of an illustration of um, um, problem solving strategy that's also involved in calorimetry. So, um, so let me just, uh, uh, let me get started. So it says some ice cube. So that's one of the objects that I'm gonna be dealing with. That starts at some temperature, is placed in some water. That's the second object that I will be dealing with in a very well insulated container. And what that sets up is this uh, relationship that you should be um, uh, familiar with. The change in, or, uh, not change, transfer of heat that goes into the colder object, ice, should be equal to heat flow out of the warmer object, water. And that's because it's saying it's a very well insulated, energy is conserved, whatever heat is flowing into the ice should be coming from somewhere. And we say that should be coming from water. So that's the basic setup. The, uh, it, kind of the statement of conservation of energy. Then the rest of the problem solving is setting up the expressions for what the heat flow into the ice is and what the heat flow out of water is. And depending on the setup, it can be a very simple setup. Um, that would be like if you had two water at different temperatures. And um, here it is a bit complicated because um, you have to deal with the phase change. So you have to deal with the latent heat. And the question doesn't tell you what the final stage is. So um, you have to make some guesses. Um, so, um, so let me kind of uh, draw the picture here and go through the kind of linear thinking process. Whenever I'm doing problem solving for a setup that I'm unfamiliar with, or at least I'm pretending to be unfamiliar with, I'd like to kind of uh, lay out the sequence of events because that, um, that kind of helps me think through what should be happening um, if I accounted for everything. So let's say I have a container here um, with some amount of water that's starting at some uh, temperature, let me call that high temperature, TH. And I have some, oops, can I do this? Sorry, I want, I want a different kind of eraser and that's not the eraser I want. I want an actual size to eraser, okay. Um, and I have some ice here that's gonna be starting out at some a different temperature, low temperature uh, or cold temperature, TC. Then, what should be happening is ice starts out as um, um, temperature below its melting point. So it should first warm up to zero degrees C. Then um, unless it's cold enough to start freezing the water, the ice should be melting. And as it melts, it's going to be absorbing more heat. That's the latent heat of fusion. So, um, so it'll be absorbing heat as it melts. So it's a question of, is the water temperature high enough for all of the ice to melt completely? And if the, um, if the, um, if the amount, the temperature of the water isn't high enough for ice to melt completely, 
then actually your answer here is pretty simple because the final temperature of the mixture should be zero degrees C. That's the temperature of ice water. That's the uh, where ice has melted partially. So it's at that point where the latent heat of fusion has changed the phase of ice into water still at zero degrees C. And that would be your answer. So here you have to make uh, some kind of a guess. And the guess that I would uh, encourage you to consider is the guess that the water, water is hot enough for all of the ice to melt. Then your answer gets a little bit more complicated. Then you have to now uh, consider the water that started out as ice as now heating up to some final temperature that's gonna be one uniform temperature of slightly colder water. So, um, and in the, in the hint I describe as much, um, you kind of have to make a guess as to what the final stage, uh, final state of the mixture is. And um, that's a guess that you will have to check, um, you will have to check after you've calculated your answer. So here, I would encourage you to um, make that guess that all of the ice will melt and then double check your guess later on. And I think looking at the value of the masses here, I'm pretty sure, um, at least based on my number sense of the latent heat, I'm pretty sure all of the ice will melt. But you know, you should double check it. So with that, uh, let me just uh, um, start writing down the equations that need to be solved under the assumption that um, assume all of ice will melt. Now, if this assumption is somehow wrong, then we need to come back and redo the question under the new assumption that not all of the ice will melt. Um, so let me get started here. So if all of the ice will melt, then the Q in will have three uh, components. There's a heat transfer into ice uh, while it's rising, uh, while it's heating up from minus 22 degrees C to all the way up to zero degrees C. So there's gonna be, um, uh, there's gonna be a specific heat capacity of ice that you will have to look up times the mass of the ice that's given 0 0.1 kilograms times the change in temperature. And here I'm just gonna write down the number because or yeah, I'm just gonna write down the number because it's given there. Um, it's gonna be zero degrees C minus, minus 22 degrees C. So for a change of 22 degrees C. So that's gonna be one component that's uh, ice melting. Oh, not ice melting, sorry. That's the ice heating to the melting point. Ice heating plus now there's gonna be heat inflow as the ice melts. So um, for this, you will have to look up the latent heat of fusion for ice. So latent heat of fusion for um, ice or water. I mean, you know, it's the same thing for one substance. Um, and since we are making the assumption that all of the ice will melt, here for the mass of the ice, I'll use the entire mass of ice. That's the same uh, variable as what I used before. Now I'm highlighting this so that uh, for a different question where, you know, if not all of the ice melted, then this will have to be different to account for different amount of ice melting. Uh, with the latent heat, there is no change of temperature. And if you look at the constant that you're looking up that reflects that specific heat capac capacity has um, per degrees C or per Kelvin in the denominator, latent heat doesn't. So this is the second part. This is the ice melting. As ice melt, it absorbs heat. And finally, the third part of QIN is the water that used to be ice now rising up to the final temperature. So that's gonna be the specific heat capacity of water because substance it is now is water times the mass of the ice 
because the thing that the object that we are considering is what used to be ice times the uh, temperature change. And this is where I'll need some symbols. It's going to be the final temperature of the overall mixture minus zero degrees C. Or, you know, just the final temperature of the overall mixture if you are writing it in degrees C. So that's Q in. It has three parts. And uh, for Q out, you will, uh, Q out is a lot simpler. That's the heat flowing out of the water. So um, that'll have to be, and the way my equation is written here, both the Q in and Q out are expected to be positive numbers. So I'm going to write my equation so that they are both positive. Um, if you wrote them a little bit differently, if you wrote them in this uh, form that I didn't use, like, you know, Q1 plus Q2 is equal to zero, then this might be negative. Um, I didn't write it that way because I like to avoid uh, having variables that are unexpectedly negative. So, um, so Q out is going to be specific capacity of water times the mass of the water. That's uh, this mass given here times the temperature change. And this is where I'm going to be careful to write it so that it's going to be positive. So it should be written in this form, 31 degrees C minus T final, because I know T final is going to be lower than 31 degrees C. And I would like to ensure that this quantity here is positive so that the way I wrote the equation is um, correct. And, you know, there's no one correct or wrong way to do it. If your QR is negative, I mean, that can be correct. It's a matter of consistency with the, how you wrote your equations. Here, as I was writing down this equation, I knew all my quant uh, heat flow quantities has to, had to be positive. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, so I'm not going to do the detailed solving because I think it's relatively easy algebra that everyone can do. Um, now, what you do here is you set these two equal to each other, then you have one equation and one unknown. So you have to collect the like terms, the TF into one side and then solve for it, plug in all the numbers and get a single answer that's hopefully some number between zero and 31 degrees C. So, so that's a calorimetry. And uh, I guess um, the reason I didn't don't like going over it in physics classes. It's, um, well, I mean, there's a value in going over it. Last uh, virtual class session, I was going over questions that were basically uh, word problems in a math class. And that's uh, really what calorimetry questions are. It's uh, uh, once you are familiar with the concept of a specific capacity, latent heat, energy conservation, then it is kind of um, doing a, because the developing the equation you write down, all of that is kind of uh, the same skill that you do need to solve any word problem in a math class. It's not, it's not as though there's a particular problem solving strategy that specifically applies to calorimetry problems. So, um, but you know, it is complicated enough that it's a worth um, kind of seeing all the thought process that's involved particularly for a complicated uh, setup like this one where uh, one of the components has multiple things. Oh, I forgot to write down here. The third part, uh, uh, ice, water, heating. Uh, multiple components that you have to worry about. Um, and that's the part where you kind of have to know some physics and or chemistry to know to write down all the terms. 